May I welcome you to Jerusalem on a day so beautiful that it cannot be described but the glorious ancient city is a backdrop of what you're seeing right now. Come a little closer and don't miss any of it. Below me is the road to Bethlehem. At that time in history, all visitors to Bethlehem took the road below me out of the ancient city to the south, to Bethlehem, where the Savior was born. Just the other side of the road is Gehenna. It's where the rubbish was burned in the ancient days for the entire city. They called it the living hell where the fire was never quenched because there, 24 hours a day, the rubbish of the great city was consumed. We are bringing to you a series of lessons. Jerusalem, where empires die. This has never been said of any city in the history of mankind, that there is a city where empires die. The subheading to the lessons is, will America die at Jerusalem? Later in these studies, I will read to you a telegram which I sent to the President of the United States informing him not as these lessons, but of the destiny of the United States of America in its relationship to this remarkable city that I have called Jerusalem, the miracle city. Possibly you realize that cities have soul. Cities have feeling. When you go to New York City, you feel New York City. You immediately know that you are not in a desert. You uh, immediately realize that you are not in a small town. You realize that you're in a conglomerate of nationalities, of people from every situation in life, from all around the world, that makes it a unique city. New York has a soul. So does London, England, and Paris, France, <laughs> and even Las Vegas. When you get off the plane, before you can get to the front door, you've met a, a hundred gambling machines just in the airport. Uh, when you get to your hotel, you can't find the desk because there's another hundred gambling machines in the lobby. Yes, Las Vegas has a spirit that you feel, that you know. More than any city on the face of this earth, Jerusalem has a soul. It has a spirit. It has a feeling unlike any other city on the face of this earth. We class it as Jerusalem, the miracle city. Every foot of Jerusalem's earth is vibrant with historical significance without any doubt at all. On every hand which we may turn left or right, you will observe timeless landmarks and sacred memorials that have been building one upon another for 3,000 years on the face of this earth. This means that Jerusalem is not just simply noise <laughs> that you hear below with the mighty vehicles moving in commerce and that the, and that the ancient stones and covered streets in the old city that we'll be showing you some of, that these, these stones whisper. They whisper quietly, but irrepressibly, saying that this is the Earth's miracle city. It speaks to us of bygone centuries, yes, but also of bygone millennia, because when Abraham walked the paths of that hill behind me, <laughs> it was 3,000 years ago. Indeed, for it to even be a city is a miracle because I would have to uh, be very sincere and honest with you to say that this miracle city is the most hated city 
on the face of this earth. No city has so many enemies as this city. There is no city that so many people would like to see fall into the rubble and the debris of the centuries. They would like to see it plowed like a farm. The only reason that we could say that this miracle city is Earth's most hated city is because the greatest miracles of all planet Earth's history took place in this city. If you want to make the devil angry, let a miracle take place close to you. Be in an area where he is doing things supernaturally and you've got a problem, he gets very angry. I, I never paid much attention to the devil in my life until I found a savior and he became very apparent <laughs> that, that I had an enemy. He was God's enemy also. So this, this miracle city has its enemies that would like to see it destroyed, humiliated. The great embassies of the world are not here. They are by the seashore in Tel Aviv because they can't stand to, to say, yes, Jerusalem, the miracle city, is where our embassy is. It just happens to be that where God blesses, no man can take it away. And if God says you'll be here forever, you'll be around when those empires die and are laid on the rubbish heap of the centuries. And so God has spoken of this miracle city. Well, we can only say that in its narrow streets, in its little stone uh, streets, in its arched uh, uh, coverings, uh, it is known every veritable hell of revolution. Uh, it, it has known, it, it has known every anger. It has known all of the blood splashing as possible against its walls by by generals, uh, by businessmen, uh, by emperors, by all kinds and types of human persons in the history of this world. It's been there. It's been there. And uh, not only we could give you the history of it for 3,000 years, that would we will do that in another lesson, but uh, we just want you to know and to realize that you are looking at Earth's miracle city. But not only, not only is it the world's most hated city, but you would have to say it is also, which is a conundrum, the world's most loved city. <laughs> there is no city on the face of the earth where so many would give so much for this city. No. There is no piece of earth uh, on, on planet earth where so many would give their life as for this city. And so not only is it hated by evil, misconception, and, and uh, ignorance, but it is also loved by intelligence and, and by perspective of people who understand uh, the ages in which we live. Our textbook should teach us a thousand times more about history. If we were to know what has happened before us, we'd know better how to live at the present time and prepare for the ages that are beyond us. And so what we need to know is what has God done in the times before us? And what is he doing now? Many people do not understand the movement of war at this moment and the, the, the movements of nations. Why Russia has become so, so mighty and forceful and belligerent. It's because Ezekiel 38 and 39 says she must march against this land. And at that point, she will be judged by the Almighty. She's getting ready for her bath day in blood. It will be, it will be such a day as the earth has never known before. But in love, <laughs> a city so loved by so many people that cares for those sacred rock behind me, they care for it. When we look at this grand and, and, and beautiful city, there's so many things about it that are so truly exciting to us that I would like to enumerate uh, just a few of those. That's the city back of me where Abraham not only obeyed God, he received a divine revelation that you and I live by today. Jehovah Jireh, on the hill just over the way here, uh, where they have what's called Temple Mount, and where they now have a, a, 
uh, a Muslim mosque. I hate to call it a pagan temple. Uh, the Muslims derive their, Christ, their, their religion partly from the Jews, partly and from the Bible, and partly from the Christians, and partly from God only knows where. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it is situated in the holiest place on the face of this earth, where God spoke to Abraham. And Jesus said, Abraham saw my day and was glad. He had the first dynamic revelation of Calvary. If you were to throw a stone five times from where Abraham was offering his offering on Moriah uh, to Mount Calvary, you'd already be there. It's five stone throws away. At that time, there were no buildings there, and he could see Golgotha with its ugly face staring at him, where he said, on top of that, my son would die. So it is a miracle city. Jerusalem, the miracle city, in that it revealed God. He's a Jehovah Jireh. The Lord will provide. He is a providing God. This city is testimony and witness of that, because after these thousands of years, he has provided they're building every day. They're changing every day. The city is getting more beautiful every day. The city is growing every day in population. It's growing in wealth every day. I mean, now, 3,000 years later, that makes it a miracle city. No one could say aught from that, but that it truly is a miracle city that 3,000 years later, Jehovah Jireh still rules and reigns in that city. The city behind me here, are, are with me, you're in the midst of it, the, the, the city of Jerusalem, the miracle city, is the city where David, where David talked with God. Possibly no man in history ever communicated with God in the same way this man did. You read the Psalms, read Psalm 23, Jehovah is my shepherd. Huh, who ever thought of that before, you know? Think of the pr preservation, he leadeth me besides still waters. You see, uh, he, he was a man that knew something. He had something. He had a relationship that very few human persons have ever had. This makes him a dynamic one. But it also makes Jerusalem the miracle city. Here was a man that talked with God. And on the more delightful side, th this was a city where <laughs> David danced in the streets because the tabernacle was returned home because the Ark of the Covenant was coming to its abiding place. He, he, he danced in the streets. Yeah, his wife uh, had religion possibly on the outside. She was a, a king's daughter, but on the inside she was devoid of any spiritual strength and knowledge, and uh, she made sport and fun of his spiritual movements and, and, and said it wasn't worthy of a king. But even a king can rejoice in God. It doesn't matter, sir, if you have $50 million or $100 million. You can rejoice in God like the person who has nothing. You bankers, you attorneys, you industrialists, you union leaders, you have a right to rejoice in God. In the miracle city, a man named David, <laughs> the king of the land, danced before God in the streets. Uh, it is a miracle city. It certainly is. It was in this city that he wrote some of his most delightful, refreshing, remarkable, and amazing words. It was in this city that he had a revelation that a Messiah would come one day and would be of his own seed when he came uh, to, to bring peace to the world. Uh, he was a prophet. The New Testament classes David as a prophet. It says he was a prophet. And he spoke of things unborn. Uh, he spoke of things of the dynamic future. Oh, that we had men like that today. Most people living today can't see the end of the nose. Don't tell them I said so, you see. But, but here was a man that could see millennia out in front of him. Here was a man that could see generations that had not yet been born. Oh, Jerusalem is a miracle city. It's the place where spiritual things happen, where destiny things take place where David roamed its streets and danced through its streets and sang hymns unto the Almighty. How beautiful it is to look through the streets of, of this city and to walk over the spots, same spots that he walked over. This majestic city of Jerusalem that we are so much a part of, I feel, I feel integrated <laughs> into this city of Jerusalem. I feel a part of it. 
I feel at home. Yeah, I feel that in this city there is rest for my spirit. I am looking at a place 100 yards from here where God spoke to me personally with tears running down my face saying, you will bring a million souls to heaven. I said, oh, no, no, no. He said, yes, do as I tell you to do, and you will. And he says, the Arab that you saw plowing behind a camel at two miles an hour, says, you can work like him if you want to. Says, you won't go far. Says, he can see the place in the evening where he started in the morning. But if you work as the Israeli on his big tractor with about 20 discs behind him plowing 20 furrows wide at about 10 miles an hour, and, and just in an hour's time, he's over the hill and gone to another place at the labor. Says, if you will get some disc working for you, which are your partners, says, you can bring a million. Yes, God speaks to you out of this city. This is a miracle city as no other city on the face of the earth. Yes, I've been to Chicago. God never said a word to me in Chicago as far as I know, except to pray for the wicked city. I have, I've been to New York many times, but God never spoke to me in New York, but many times God has spoken to me in the miracle city, the city of Jerusalem. And every time I come, I say, God, speak to me again. I want to hear your voice. This is the place of your habitation. The word says, speak to me from this city. Yet men like Isaiah also uh, walked through this city. It was Isaiah in chapter 17, verse, verse 14 that said, and a virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a child. <laughs> Ooh. When I was a young man, uh, the great uh, uh, theologians of the liberal uh, order uh, said that in the original, you know, they were always well-educated, you know. Some people are educated above their intelligence. Uh, it says in the, in the original, it says, it says that she was a woman, a young woman, and not a virgin. When they found the Dead Sea Scrolls that we will be bringing to your attention in one of these lessons, the Lord willing, uh, they found the whole book of Isaiah intact, and it said, an unmarried girl shall conceive and bring forth. And so, uh, those liberals have all died and gone to their own place now, but the Word of God remains the same. Isaiah walked through those streets. Oh, I would like to have seen him. I would have loved to have stood beside him. He was the golden-tongued orator. Some say silver-tongued. He was far beyond that. You read the book of Isaiah, and it is a book of amazing deliberations, of anointings, of perceptions. He walked through that city. Jeremiah wept in that city. They put him in a dungeon because he said, say, this government's going to fall. <laughs> if you want to get in a dungeon, say, the government's going to fall. But he was a man that was hearing from heaven. People have heard from heaven in that city. That's the reason we call this lesson Jerusalem, the miracle city because so many miracles have taken place there. Not only Jeremiah walked through its streets, as we all know, but, you know, John Baptist was born, he, he, he was born on the west of town, down the hill in Ankaran. His ministry was mostly on the east of town, right down the hill by the Jordan. He had to cross through here to get there. You got it? <laughs> yeah, maybe where I'm sitting right now, I'm sitting on top of the footprints of John Baptist. You should have seen him as he passed by, dressed in camel hair, with a rough, toughy beard, and with his hair right around his shoulders there, uh, not well kept. And you should have heard the fiery words coming up out of him, uh, looking across at the, at the, uh, at the, uh, at the Herod's palace, and screaming, Herod, you stole your brother's wife, you dirty low-down dog. And it's, hey, you're going to get your head cut off. Well, that's what happened. That's exactly what happened. A men of courage walked through this city. Men that didn't deem their life uh, of any great estimation, but deemed truth as of great estimation walked over this city. It's still the miracle city. Yeah, some people can't see the city for listening to the clutter of noise, like you can hear right now in the background. Forget the noise and shut it out and look up to him that made all things. And you'll hear the voice of God tenderly speaking to you from this city. Because it was in this city where, where the Lord Jesus Christ cleansed the temple, walked into the temple and those that were making merchandise of the offerings. 
charging too much for it, giving inferior animals, uh, changing the money at a, at a good profit. He threw the whole mess over and said, my, my father's house is a house of prayer and you've made it a den of thieves. Hey, would you, wouldn't you have liked to have been there that day? That was some more day, you know, when he, he cleaned the place out and took a scourge and, and, and those cheating men, he hit them with it and said, get out of here. Well, he wasn't the tender little guy that some people talk about. After all, he was a carpenter for 30 years. And so he, he walked these streets all over here and, and was well acquainted with the city. But not only that, he rode through that golden gate that we're going to be talking to you about in a later lesson. And triumphantly, he rode through as king, and he'll ride through it again one day. It's in this city where the church was born, the most powerful institution on the face of the earth. It is the miracle group. How can a thing sustain itself for 2,000 years and at this moment in time be the greatest force and power on the face of this earth? That's the glorious church of the Lord Jesus Christ, not related to denominations, not, not, not related to, 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 to nations, but related to the body of the, of, of the master, those that have been born again by his spirit, whatever race, whatever nationality, that are part of the living body. He was born on that hill right back there. <laughs> That's where it all began, right there. And it spread to the uttermost parts of the earth. I have taken it to Tibet myself and laid hands on those people and they received the blessing of Jerusalem. I took it into the jungles of South America where they'd never seen a watch, never seen a movie camera. And, and there we took the blessings of this city. It was born here, it started here. The stream is pure. It flows up from the throne of God in this area and flows out to the world. It was from this glorious city that Peter and John walked through the, the beautiful gate into the temple and saw a lame man begging for a little bit of money or a little food. And, and this was this dynamic person uh, called Simon that said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee. And the beginning of church miracles took place. Yes, I've seen miracles all over the world. I've seen miracles all over the world. They began over here. <laughs> that's the starting point. Yeah, that's where they began. The first Christian miracle took place just over there in that city. How beautiful it is to walk those streets and to feel the vibrations of the centuries to feel the mighty power of the one who made all things in that city. The city of originations, the, the, the city of perceptions, the city of guidance that guides men to the eternal city of God. What a city. <laughs> oh yes, every city in the world has a spirit, but only one city has this spirit, and that is Jerusalem, the miracle city. And right across the other side of the hill here, just across there, is the Mount of Olives. It's so clear, it's so beautiful right now. That's where the Messiah will come back to. And that will be the crowning miracle. When his feet touch that place, it will cleave, not as you would expect it to. It will cleave east and west. And a valley shall be set up that will run clear to the north into the place called Megiddo. <laughs> what a place. What a time. So miracles will not cease here. Uh, they, will, they will be maybe greater in the future. This is not a has-been situation that we're talking about. Yes, it was, but it also is. Right now, the fate of the world lies in that city. You better believe it. This city can catapult World War III with the snap of a finger if they want to. They have the ability to do it. And they don't do it because they have to work in the plan of God. You can be thankful for that. But one time the King of Peace and the Prince of Peace shall return to this city. And that will be the crowning moment of all history. That will be the crowning day of all times. What a beautiful, magnificent situation it will be when the King of Peace and the Prince of Peace comes to the city of peace and speaks peace for planet Earth.